be surprised how, many, how little we pack is music. You're actually a graduate after this, so like there's so many doors open. Like I thought I was like, what am I going to do? But the more you look, the more you actually find there are so much, so many opportunities. You just have to find the right place to look. I mean, I would advise go on um, most job boards, sign up to re um, regular emails on scientific related jobs. Because I was like, what job can you get like apart from working in the lab? And when I got this job offer, I was like, well, there are actually different opportunities. I mean, med, I don't know if there's, um, I think there's some of the thermal fish I'm talking about at the moment, like they, they sell uh, medical equipment. I mean, well, from what I've heard, from, I've got two friends working in that field at the moment, and they're pretty well off. Um, they get paid a really good base salary, 60k up, plus commission. I mean, that, for me, going towards that from undergrad, it's amazing. You don't know how it feels like to have five grand in every month like, in your bank account. Obviously, before that. But yeah, um, my MSc at the moment, in terms of content, I would say it's definitely more fast paced than an undergrad, but I can handle it better because I'm used to the undergrad. And I think the undergrad is actually harder than an MSc, mainly because you don't do too many things at one time. In, in your undergrad, like I was doing so many things at one time, I had like two courseworks, revision for an exam, and preparing for my dissertation lab. With a master's, it, it may sound like real quick, but we have like a module every three weeks. So you start off at the beginning of the month, you do some lectures. This is an MSc, by the way, not MRES. I'll tell you about MRES in a sec. So you start off at your lectures. At the end of three weeks, you'll get like two or three days off from your normal timetable routine and you either have an exam or a uh, course of submission. Um, it sounds really intense, but the more modules you do, the more you get used to it, and it's actually fine. I think it's easier than I remember. So the MSc I'm doing at the moment is the MSc Cancer. It's literally called MSc Cancer. And um, we do modules every month, as I said, and from May until September, you do a summer project in the lab. and um, in the Designated Institute, normally UCL Cancer Institute. And MSc is mainly, um, it's mainly a taught module, so there's not as much application in the lab. Whereas MRES, it's more lab work. So I've got a friend who's in MRES at the moment, in Imperial, and he actually does undergrad here as well. Um, he's doing his MRES in Cancer Biology. He had from September to December to have like lectures on the main aspects of cancer, so like, all the, um, all the tumor suppressor research, and all the, um, all the oncogene research, and all the signaling pathways in the cell. That's the main uh, core aspects of the process. And from January to September, he has like two main projects. I mean, he's literally in the lab from, he tells me, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I mean, that's a really intense course. I mean, they, them guys in Imperial are insane. They expect you to be like, one girl told me, you were the slaves of the lab. I can tell you, within like three or four months, he knows techniques that I'm sh I don't want to. He knows techniques that Darshana and everyone here would be proud of. It's <laughs> like, really impressive what he does. Um, if you want to go into that course, I mean, MRES should definitely be something you should look at. Um, it's definitely more practical. It's definitely if you want to go towards a PhD. And like, their PhD opportunities are better than ever seen. I think it's something like there were 30 students in the last year's MRES Cancer in Biology and Imperial, and 28 all are doing a PhD right now. So, I think you have to get 2-1 two, two in Imperial to apply for that course. Um, but surprisingly, my one in UCL was only a 2-2 two, two entry. So, that's, it's, it's definitely low grade boundaries that open up opportunities. But as I said, um, masters is not the only way. It's definitely something that you can, you know, learn more and then progress on with your career. But it's not saying like I have to have a masters to do this job or I have to have this. You'll find some companies they'll take you with your undergrad and pay for your masters while you're working with them, or they'll say go off for a year, study this, and we'll pay for it. And then I mean, you don't have to like take it like secondary school, uni. 
can always take it however you want, as long as you get there in the end. And um, yeah, just just give you like I mean, I started off thinking I wanted to do MS, MSc in cancer. I wanted to I wanted to know everything about cancer. And you know what? Like I'm in my last module right now. I know I didn't know, I didn't think I'll say this, but I can safely say I think I know almost everything about cancer. Right? Almost. I'll say about ninety percent. It's so intense. Um, so yeah. That. And I hope it's helped. I don't know how much it's helping. I don't know how much it's not helping. But I'm just giving you a little bit of um, an insight into what I do. And uh, join the sports team. <laughs> it definitely keeps you on your toes. It's not bad, is it? Oh, yeah. Thank you. They've actually done research in that specific field. For example, 
we'll get the guy who um, founded the PI3 kindness signal in, and he'll give us a lecture on PI3 kindness. Or we'll have like the guy who is the world leader in the P53 research, and he'll give us a lecture on P53. The effort they put in the MSC Cancer course to like find these world leading lecturers and bring them to your course is definitely worth just listening to the lectures. You'll learn so much. And that's, I think that's what's good about uh, MSC. It's, so, it's such, such targeted learning that you won't be like, do you know what, this lecture I've got yeah. And you have to be ready for it because it's quite, it's, it's not hard, but it just drains you out because it's just hard. <laughs> <laughs> Not to discourage you, but you just need to have a kind of mindset. You just don't go into it thinking, you know, I just want to get a pass, I just want to get married. Nah, it's full up. Like, for my class, we divide itself, they divide us into reproductive health and with body genetics um, people as well. And in my class, unfortunately, I'm the only guy there. Lots of are women. So, <laughs> um, like, we always kind of interact with each other and they always post things beforehand, so you need to come prepared and if you're not prepared, you look stupid because people will just be exchanging stuff and you're just sitting down. So, it's about you staying up, even if you're sleeping for three hours, but just the next day for you to prepare and just say even two lines, it makes it, it, makes it look good because most of the teachers are looking at that in terms of when you want to do your dissertation as well. They look at that to take you on board, to see how serious or whatever they see you as. But yeah, it's, it's a good thing. And if you want to do it, do it and don't regret it. When I was going to do my, I had friends telling me, why don't I just go and do some job, get experience, that, that, that. But I think I read something, I'm not very good. I don't like reading a lot, but I read something somewhere saying that um, wherever you stay, you never think it's wasted, but you never know when you need it in major life. I might do this, I might not get into this, I might not be an biologist, but I might end up finding myself working somewhere. But one day that might come and give me a push somewhere. So never think what you're doing now is wasted. Even if it seems that way, you never know. So that's all. So I mean, like. Um, I think what Stellabra and Alfred was trying to say is that in an MSc it is lectures, 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 and there will be a time where you should block out during the lecture. It's, it's human nature, you can't concentrate for three hours straight. But I don't know, you, to, you just have to decide whether, because now there's not really an MSc, there's like an MSc and an MRS, so I was trying to say. So if you want more of a lab and practical experience, definitely look at MRS courses. I mean, many universities offer that. But if you want to be more taught and you want to like thoroughly learn the subjects and, and different parts of different subjects, then definitely go for an MSc because you've been taught by the world leaders in the subjects. What about you, do you for cancer? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the state of open union, it's really bad. Because <laughs> <laughs> the pathway is such as ridiculous. Like, I can't even get my head around it. We had one module where we had to do cancer and I didn't have an assignment on cancer to do with reproduction, reproduction and it's just mental. Like, don't do cancer. <laughs> Whatever you do, leave it for them. They have the head for cancer. I'm not saying you guys don't have a head, but cancer is just horrible. As well as the disease one, it's just horrible. Do anything else about cancer. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you very much. Is everybody here an undergrad or postgrad or in limbo with yourself? Uh, undergrad, yeah. What are you studying? Uh, five years of science. I'm also an undergrad. Anybody else with a little homie here? I think we're all huh? I think we're all fed yet? No, we're graduate. Okay, graduate. Okay, for inspiration. Okay. Um, <laughs> Along the same sort of themes, I'll give you a bit of backdrop as to what I'm talking about. You've all heard the words central dogma and I tapped it. The central dogma of biology, biochemistry, etc. You know the whole. Anybody know the central dogma of molecular biology? RNAs, protein, DNA, maybe, maybe not. It was 
spill some laugh at this, but hey, I'll shut up. Um, basically, this is sort of brief walk through my journey into a PhD and research I've been doing on the way and whatnot. I started off as a problem. Um, I was. I have a quite an inquisitive mind, but I don't like rote learning or linear approach to things. I don't like being told what to do. I have an issue with authority. Um, but yeah, I was a problem student, but I was quite good at what I did. Um, I also had a passion for things, a passion for understanding the way things work. And apparently that eventually goes to together to eventually lead to a profession. I'm yet to see the evidence for professionals in me, but apparently It's good to define the field that you're talking about called the Cartesian approach and etymologically the word education is derived from that word up there uh, and it's essentially to bring out that which is within. So any true learning is essentially about bringing into you that which you already know. You already know most of this stuff but it's about polishing the surface and allowing you to elaborate on things. And I suppose those who are wiser than us have gone on to say that the purpose of education is that of reducing or bringing out that which is there in so. Now, for those of you who are still studying um, and whatnot, the university is really a contract. And it's a contract because like any contract, there's parties involved, we are providing a service, we are consumers, now we are no longer students. Universities are about student markets as opposed to student learning, and you enter a contract, and that contract is preparation. If you don't prepare, you don't succeed. It's as simple as that. There's no... I'm not here to tell you anything you read. I'm not here to give you gospel or make you feel like you're some sort of Phoenician monk. It's hard work to do success. If you work hard enough, you will get results. And on that note, one would beg the argument that there is a degree of potential which is required without potential. You can't really get anywhere. And what really sums it up to me is the light bulb. In a dark room, you don't switch on the lights. It's not much, right? And that's where potential performance comes in. So, Mr. Problem, who ran all passionate about things, apparently turned out to be a professional, realized that it's not as simple as that. It's not linear, it's not binary, it's not one, two, three, all that. That's preparation and potential, and it's not a straight path to get to where you are. And that was my email address. Now, on my journey, um, I studied for an undergraduate head, and I did an MSc and an MRes in the same year, and then I got a job here. And then I got offered a PhD. My PhD is on proteogenomics, so that's proteomics and genomics of antibiotic resistance. 